Hello, it's Arit here from Esatino Media, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to schedule a Zoom meeting and invite someone simply and easily. You may be watching this because you've just been tasked with scheduling a meeting and you need to send the link to someone, or maybe you're just in Zoom Academy mode right now and you need to learn how to use this tool for work. To be respectful of your time, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly schedule a meeting and grab the link and send it off to your participant in under two minutes. You can do this super quickly, but if you wanna stick around after showing you how to do that, I'm gonna go through each option specifically and explain what it means. Because there's a lot of stuff in the back end when you're scheduling a video that you might not know whether to check that box or not. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is be logged into your Zoom account. And I've been using Zoom for years for our YouTube coaching and our design discovery meetings. So I come in here usually and what I do is I go to meetings. This is me scheduling a meeting super quickly and grabbing the link. So I'll go to meetings. I'll go to this button right here, which says schedule a meeting. And all I'll do is I'll just type in the, my client's name or whoever it is that I'm meeting. I'll type in briefly what it is about. So let's just say YouTube coaching. Come in here, select the date. So let's just say April 20th at 1 p.m. and it's for an hour. I'll pretty much leave all of this the same, which I'll explain what all of these things mean in a second, but I'm just showing you the workflow. I'll hit save and right off the bat, I'll have a link here, the invite link, which is what I'll right click and select copy. And then I'll go into the email and just paste it in the email. So that's a super quick, less than two minute way of quickly scheduling a meeting, grabbing the link and sending it to someone. Now, what do all of those things mean when you're scheduling a meeting? So let's go back here now and go through what each of these things mean. All right, the topic and the date and time is pretty self-explanatory. If you wanted to add a description to the Zoom meeting, you could do that too by just hitting this link here and typing in a few sentences. The other thing to keep in mind as well when you are selecting the duration is that if you're on the free Zoom plan or the basic plan, then you'll notice if you select a time that's more than an hour, it'll give you a little warning sign saying that if you have three participants or more, that meeting will be limited to 40 minutes. So just keep that in mind. I have the pro license, which is the next step up, and that means unlimited time for your meetings. You don't have to worry about getting cut off at 40 minutes if you are planning on having more than one person, more than one other person, so a total of three participants. But if you're just doing one-on-one, -on -one, you're totally fine. You could do a one hour duration meeting and select that here. If you're doing half an hour, then you would just set that to zero and then select 30 over here. Make sure your time zone is set to the correct time zone because it's, it's going to be 1 p.m. at your specific time zone. So you can easily just select the drop down menu and select your time zone here. This over here is if it's a reoccurring meeting. So I typically do like one-off scheduling, but if let's say you're setting up a meeting with a person and it needs to happen every single Tuesday at 1 p.m. So what you'll do here is select reoccurring meeting and you can select over here weekly and it repeats once a week, right? So that we're left leaving it on that and and you'd be selecting the day. So in this case, it's actually not Tuesday, it's Wednesday. This is uh, April 20th is a Wednesday. So it'll be set for every single Wednesday. And you can also determine when that reoccurring meeting ends, if you do have an end date. So that's where you would select it here, or you can select after five occurrences, then you can end this meeting here. So the question becomes, do they use the same link over and over again? Do they use a different link? That's something as well that you could set further down in the options here. So if you do have it set like this to a reoccurring meeting, you basically just be using the same link over and over again for every single Wednesday. And it would also show up every single Wednesday in your scheduled meetings in this area right here in Zoom. All right, so what else do we have here? So registration, you can mark this as required or not. 
So if someone needs to actually register for the Zoom meeting, this is where you would do that here. For the single occurrence meeting like we have here, you'll see where it says meeting ID. It'll ask you, do you want a generated ID or do you want to go with personal meeting ID? So what's the difference between these two? Basically, when you have your Zoom account, you're actually given a what's called a personal meeting ID or a personal meeting room, which is yours to use however you like. Just imagine it's like your office room or your meeting room where you can invite people to come in and that link, that same link can be used however you want over and over again. I personally don't like using personal meeting just because if that link was already given to one attendee or it's pasted somewhere else, then it's quite possible that someone might click on that link and you might be in a meeting with another person in your personal meeting room. So I always like to have a new link generated. So this is the generated ID option that you see here. And I generate a new ID or a new link, Zoom link, for every unique individual meeting. The only scenario where I would personally use a personal meeting ID is if the people that you're meeting in that room are in-house. So maybe it's team members or the people, your colleagues, people that you work with, because that there's more a sense of trust, right? They're not gonna share it with other people. That link is not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be within your company. So in that sense, it's like your personal meeting room and you can jump in there whenever you guys need to meet. So I'm gonna leave that on generated ID here. Security, it's automatically set to having a unique passcode. And if they have the specific invite link, then they don't even need to enter this passcode because it's attached to the link. So I'll show you what I mean in a second when we get to the link. This option right here is asking you if you want your attendees to go and wait in a waiting room, if they are early to the meeting for whatever reason. So they're not gonna go straight to the Zoom room. They'll just get put into what's called a waiting room. And only once you as the host, you're in your Zoom room and you are ready to admit people into the meeting room, then that's when they get brought in. So it just gives you a little bit of extra time to get ready to get in that room, make sure your camera's working, everything. Uh, that's why I like to leave that option on. And for extra security, you also have the option here to require authentication, which in this case means like if I check this, you could see here that they'll need to sign into Zoom. So definitely leave this checked off if the person that you're meeting does not have a Zoom account because then it'll they won't be able to get in, right? So I leave this unchecked. It's pretty secure already that it's a unique link and you're meeting with that link with your attendee. Um, so that's good to go. And down here, you have your video option. So you could select whether when you come into the Zoom room, you as the host, whether you have that video automatically turned on or off. And also the same for the participant. Do you want them to automatically have their video on when they join the room or off? So I just leave this both as off and so that it gives your attendee the option to come on to video if they choose to. With audio, I just leave it on both. I mean, I don't typically have people where they're calling into the Zoom meeting, but just in case I leave it on both, it doesn't really matter either way, unless for example, you're having specifically a telephone meeting, in which case you could select that here. And if you want to go a little bit more in detail, you just need to hit show where it says options and there's some extra stuff here, which I don't typically use as well. So it says, do you wanna allow participants to join anytime? Meaning as soon as they have the link and when at whatever time or date they click on that link, they'll be in that Zoom room. So that's what that option is. Mute participants upon entry. So if you do have a lot of people joining the meeting, it's probably a good idea to just have everyone muted if you're um, if it's a type of meeting where you're presenting and you just wanna lead it and make it more streamlined so you don't have different people, because I find a lot of people as well sometimes don't know how to mute themselves. So that might be a good option if you're having a lot of people in the room. Excuse the sirens in the background. Also, we have automatically record meeting. So you do have the option once you're in the Zoom room to actually start recording and it lets all of the participants know that you are recording. But if you wanna record it automatically right from the get-go, you can select this option here. And when your participants join the meeting, 
they'll be notified that recording is in progress. And again, another option here, which is more applicable to if you have, like if you're hosting a Zoom event, you have lots of people attending, you can approve or block entry to users from specific regions or countries. If you're having a sub host, you can put in their email address here as well. And then when you're done, just hit save and you're done scheduling this meeting. And basically all of your information is here. So if you wanted to, you could add this to your Google Calendar or your Outlook. And the rest of the stuff here is really a summary of everything that you've just done. So what you need to do is you can either click and drag and right click on this and hit copy and it's going to copy the link or you can click on copy invitation. It has already a nice little template for you where it says, hi there, you're invited to a Zoom meeting. This is when it's at this is how this is the link that you need to use and you could see here it it has it says register in advance for this meeting so this email invitation will look different depending on what options you selected when you went to go schedule your meeting so i might go back here and show you and if by the way you do want to go back and edit any of those options you can always do that in your meetings area then you just go ahead and find that meeting which is right here I'm gonna hit edit. And if I've decided that I don't want people to register, so I'm gonna uncheck that box. I'm gonna hit save. And then let's see how it affected the, the uh, invitation. So I'm gonna hit copy invitation. Now you could see here that it gives you all of the information regarding the meeting because prior you needed to register, but now you don't. So it's gonna give you the passcode, the number to call in if you wanted to just call in and all of this information here, which you can then just hit copy meeting invitation. It's going to copy it to clipboard so that you could go ahead and email this someone. You paste it in an email for them. And that's it. That's how you schedule a meeting. It can either happen super quick if you know what those options mean. I took a little bit of time to explain each of those things. And when you are ready to start the meeting, once again, you go into your meetings area right here find the meeting that you're going to be starting and you just hit start and that's what will open up your zoom meeting room so that's how you schedule a zoom meeting really quickly and able to send that link out to your participants if you found this video helpful please do give it a like a thumbs up to let youtube know that this is great content and i will see you in the next video bye